Hello everyone, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the morphology of the maxillary first premolar. So what we are going to discuss in this video lecture? We are going to discuss the chronology or the timeline of development of, uh, of the maxillary first premolar. We are going to discuss the number of this tooth and various tooth numbering systems. And we will also discuss the landmarks that are present on the maxillary first premolar. So watch this video till the end. The maxillary first premolar, the calcification of this tooth begins around the age of one and a half years. And the enamel, it is completed by the age of five to six years. The tooth, it emerge into the oral, oral cavity by the age of 10 to 11 years. And the root is just completed by the age of 12 to 13 years. So if you simply add 10 plus 2, then it's 12. Now we will discuss the number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems. So in the universal numbering system, the number of the maxillary first premolar, so this is the maxillary first premolar. So number of this tooth is 5. Number begins with the third molar, one, two, three, four, five. And for the left maxillary first premolar, so this is the left maxillary first premolar, and the number is, this is 12. Now, the number of this tooth in the Palmer notation system. So in the Palmer notation system, this is the right maxillary first premolar, and number of this tooth is four. So this shape it indicates a maxillary right quadrant and this number it indicates the tooth number similarly in the opposing arch in the opposing quadrant the left maxillary quadrant the number is also four with this shape four now what is the number of this tooth in the fdi notation system so in the FDI notation system, this is the maxillary first premolar of the right side, and the number is 1, 4. So 1 means the quadrant, which is the right maxillary quadrant, and 4 is the tooth number. Similarly, for the left side, this is the maxillary first premolar, and the number is 2, 4. Here, the 2 means the left maxillary quadrant, and the 4 means, sorry, and the 4 means it is the first premolar. Now, we will discuss a brief introduction of the maxillary first premolar. So, the maxillary first premolar, it has two cusps, There's one buckle and one palatal cusp, sometimes also referred as lingual cusp, as you can see in this picture. So this is the buccal cusp and this cusp is the is the lingual cusp, also referred sometimes as palatal cusp. The buccal cusp is longer, as you can see in this picture, than the palatal cusp. Now this arrow indicates the palatal cusp, which is smaller. Uh, this tooth, it resembles the canine from the buccal aspect. So, for a comparison, you can see side by side. This one is the canine and another one is the first premolar. This tooth has two roots, uh, while the canine, it, is, it has only single root. So, this is the only premolar which has two roots. The remaining premolars, maxillary second premolar and the mandibular premolars, they are usually they are single rooted. Now from the buccal aspect, from the buccal aspect, the curvature of the cervical line, it is less. As you can see here, this is the cervical line curvature. So in the anterior teeth, whether it is central incisor, lateral or the canine, the curvature of the cervical line, it was more. Here, this curvature, it is less. From the cusp tip, there are two slopes. One slope is cuspal slope is this. Another cuspal slope is this. So on the mesial side, on the mesial side, the mesial cuspal slope, it is, it is slightly longer. This is the mesial cuspal slope and you can notice this slope is 
slightly larger so that's why this is the mesial side of the tube and from the cusp tip this is another slope and this slope is known as the distal cuspal slope and this cuspal slope it is just slightly shorter as compared to the to this cuspal slope which is the mesial cuspal slope. now the contact areas in uh, through which the tooth it comes in contact with the with the adjacent tooth they are nearly at the same levels so the contact areas mesially and distally they are nearly at the same level so the buccal cusp it is longer and have a pointed cusp tip so from the buccal aspect you can only see the buccal cusp so it is longer and it it has a pointed cusp tip so the cusp tip it is pointed now just like canine there are two developmental depressions over here this is one developmental depression and because it is close to the mesial side this is the mesial side and this is the distal side so there are two developmental depressions and these developmental depressions are known as the mesial developmental depression or mesiobuccal developmental depression and this is the distal developmental depression and in between these developmental depression this is the raised portion on the crown and this is known as the buccal ridge that's why it is also similar to canine in the canine there is a labial ridge which is also prominent like this the root also bears a close resemblance to the canine but the root it is slightly shorter two to three millimeters shorter as compared to the canine now the lingual side uh, the lingual from the lingual aspect the lingual cusp it is narrower mesiodistally so this is the lingual aspect and from the lingual aspect crown it is narrow it is narrow mesiodistally so it is narrow mesiodistally and because it is narrow mesiodistally uh, therefore the mesial and the distal side of the tooth they are visible from the lingual aspect now because the lingual cusp this is the lingual cusp and the lingual cusp is shorter as compared to the buccal cusp therefore you can see both the cusps from the lingual aspect plus you can also see both the slopes the mesial cuspal and the distal cuspal slope of the buccal cusp as well as cuspal slopes of the lingual cusp as well the lingual portion of the root it is smooth and convex with no developmental depressions or any bulge so lingual cusp it is also spheroidal and smooth and the cusp tip is pointed uh, like uh, the like the buccal cusp now the tips of the cusp they are within the confines of the root trunk so as you can here you can see so these are the tips of the cusp this is the buccal cusp and this is a lingual cusp so both of these cusp tip they are within the confines of the root trunk so this portion is the root trunk portion so these cusp tips they are not outside the root trunk or the curvature of the cervical line so this is the curvature of the cervical line and it is towards the crown surface but this curvature it is less as compared to the anterior teeth now a developmental depression is present just below the contact area you can here you can see so this is the developmental depression and from the crown surface just below the contact area it continues on the root surface now this portion is known as the marginal ridge so this is the marginal ridge known as the mesial marginal ridge so on the mesial marginal ridge you will see a groove and this groove this is the developmental groove on the mesial marginal ridge and this is one of the identification uh, of the mesial surface this depression and this groove on the marginal ridge now on the me mesial side additionally curvature of the root or the outline of the root initially it is straight then the root curves towards the lingual side while the distal outline of the root it is nearly straight 
Now, from the distal aspect, if you see the crown, uh, the surface of the crown is convex, so there is no developmental depression below the contact area. So unlike the mesial surface, on which there's a developmental depression, so the, the crown, it is convex from all aspects. The cervical line curvature, it is less, and it is similar in all anterior and posterior teeth, that like on the distal surface side, the curvature of the cervical line, it is less. The marginal ridge, it is a smooth. This ridge is known as the distal marginal ridge. And in this marginal ridge, there is no developmental depression like on the mesial surface, there was a developmental depression. So the root trunk, it is flattened with no developmental depression. The, the root surface, it is a smooth. Both crown and the root surface, they are smooth. Now from the occlusal aspect, the occlusal surface, it is hexagonal in shape so it is very angular and it is hexagonal as you can see in this this picture and in this diagram that is appearing right now on your screen now the crown it is wider mesiodistally for also from the mesial side this is a mesial side because of presence of this developmental depression so the crown is wider mesiodistally on the buccal side, you compare it with the mesiodistal dimensions on the lingual side. This dimension is known as the buccolingual dimensions. These buccolingual dimensions, they are, it is more as compared to the mesiodistal dimension. There are some more important landmarks uh, from the occlusal aspect. There's a central developmental groove, and this groove, it divides the crown surface into buccal and the lingual aspect. So this groove is the central developmental groove, and, on the, and this groove on the marginal ridge, it forms a developmental depression. So this groove is the central developmental groove. So this central developmental groove divides the crown into buccal portion and the lingual portion are some more grooves that joins this central developmental groove and those grooves are the this is the mesiobuccal groove that joins the central developmental groove and this is the distobuccal developmental groove and these two grooves they are more prominent beside this this is the mesiolingual developmental groove and disto distolingual developmental group. These grooves, they join the central developmental group. Now, there are triangular depressions that are present on each side of the marginal ridges. These are the triangular depressions. And this is just present near the mesial marginal ridge. And there is another triangular depression that is present in this area. And this triangular depression just next to the mesial marginal ridge is the mesial triangular fossa. And this triangular depression, which is present just adjacent to the distal marginal ridge, is known as the distal triangular fossa. Now, additionally, on the occlusal aspect, you will see a triangular ridge. Triangular ridge, it arises near the central developmental groove and from the central developmental groove, this ridge or linear elevation converge with the tip of the cusp. So this is a raised portion, a linear elevation, and from it arises from the central developmental depression and converge with the cusp tip. This raised portion is known as the buccal triangular ridge because of its association with the buccal cusp tip. Similarly, on the lingual side, it is a linear elevation that also arises from the central developmental groove and till the lingual cusp tip. This ridge, it is comparatively, it is less prominent, but this raised area is known as the lingual triangular ridge. And both of these buccal and the lingual triangular ridge, they form transverse ridge. So this is all about the maxillary first premolar. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Please give us your feedback.
and thank you for watching this video and stay blessed